This is how to lap the valves on a Predator 212. This is the Hemi version. So we we'll undo the air filter. We're going to back the gas line off with carburetor. And always just clamp it with some pliers just so we don't lose a bunch of fuel. And then we'll plug it with something just to keep the fuel from leaking out while we're working on it. So now that we've got the fuel line disconnected from the carburetor, we need to disconnect the springs. So we've got our thin little spring here that we'll disconnect. And we need to disconnect our little throttle control arm. So this one's a little tricky. You got to be careful, just because the little plastic control mechanism is fragile. I have broke a piece off before, but the control arm just came right out. Now we can take our carburetor off. All right, to get the head off, we'll start with the four bolts for the valve cover. Okay, and if you want to reuse the gasket for the valve cover, just be careful taking it off. It will tear pretty easy. Okay, and as you can see, we did tear the gasket. It is a thin little paper gasket. We'll just use some gasket maker and make a new seal. All right, and there's also one bolt for the throttle mechanism that we need. We've got four 12 millimeter bolts holding the head in. We've got two outside of the valve cover and then we've got two in the valve cover. They're up under the rockers here. Okay. So we got all of the all four of the bolts loose and we can just pull the head off here. Okay. Heads off. Now we've got the head off, we need to disassemble it. We're gonna start by taking the lash caps off the top of the valves here. And just be careful with these. They are small, real easy to lose. All right, and now we need to get the valves out. So the retainers are real, real easy to get off on these Predators. You just take and push down on the retainer and slide it over so that you got this big hole here. We're just going to slide the end of the valve stem out of that hole. And we just slide it over. And there is a spring under there, so be real careful. You know, keep constant tension on it. And it just comes right loose. And see, there's your retainer, there's your spring and the valve will slide right on out of there. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're just gonna cock the retainer to the side, slid right out, and push the valve out. Now we're gonna take the rockers off. By these little pins, there's a clip on each end of the pin, and you only have to take one of the clips off. We're going to take the clip off that's closer to the wall here because you can't slide this pin towards that wall and get it out completely. We're going to have to slide the pin towards the inside. Now there are tools for this, but I found just a adjustable wrench to work just fine. Okay, so there goes the clip. We can 
slide the pin out, pins out, and rocker comes right off. Now I am going to use, uh, you know, the little suction cup dowel method. Um, I have used a hose before, you know, you stick the valve in and stick a hose on the end of the valve stem here and work it back and forth, but that method's kind of tough because uh, you can't really see what's going on you're working on it from the back um, I've seen people use drills as well but with a drill you know it is easy to take a little too much off um, very quickly and it's, it doesn't take a lot of effort to do this so we're just going to use the good old suction cup um, got some valve grinding compound um, I just got it at the auto parts store. All right. So we're going to lube up the valve stem here. Put a little oil on it just so we don't mar up the valve guides in here while we're doing this. Okay. And we're going to put a little valve compound on the face of the valve. And we'll wet the tip of our suction cup just so it'll stick to the valve. And once we've got it stuck there, we're just gonna work back and forth real gently. And you can hear at the start, the grinding is pretty loud. And as we work on it, the grinding should get quieter. Now you can hear the grinding getting a little quieter and I can also feel it. It's definitely not as, uh, doesn't feel as abrasive as before. So when it does that, you want to pick the valve up, rotate it, kind of reposition some of the compound, and go again. It's getting quieter again, so we'll pick it up, rotate it, go again. Okay, it's getting quieter. Okay, let's take a look at our progress. Okay, I'm gonna wipe away some of the compound. What we're looking for after we do this is there's a little kind of matte gray line here. And you want that line to be uniform. And you want it to be uniform, and you want to see the same matte gray line here on the valve, and you want that to be uniform all the way around. You don't, don't want to see any dips or breaks in that line. But looks like we have a solid matte gray line on the face of the valve and on the seat there. I don't see any gaps or anything. Um, what we'll do in a little bit is I'll shine a, I'll take it in the dark, I'll shine a light through the backside, see if I, with the spring and the retainer on, and see if I see any light escaping, you know, through the cracks. And we'll fill it with water as well, and just to see if any water leaks out. So we'll do the intake side now. Now, the benefit to doing this is, you know, if you have, you know, the valve. Uh, face and the seat aren't mated very well you can have air escape during compression now that air escaping is you know power escaping so if you have a good seal between your valve seat and your valve face you're gonna get all of that power from the explosion during combustion And once it gets quiet, we'll pick it up, 
rotate it and do it again. Okay, so we're done with the intake side. Let's take the valve out, clean it, and make sure we have a even gray ring on the valve face and the seat. And when we're done with this, we're gonna make sure, I'm gonna take uh, some carburetor cleaner and clean this thing out really good. Just make sure we don't have any of this grit left in there because it will damage your engine. Okay. So like we have a nice even gray ring around the valve face and the valve seat looks good as well. Now as you can see, I mean that took nothing to do. Okay, so I've got the valves and springs back in and the retainers back in temporarily. We're just gonna see, uh, pour some water into the exhaust and the intake just to see if the valves leak. Now some people say leave it sitting overnight, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm ready to put it back together. But it'll, you know, be apparent if we have any really big leaks or anything like that. So I'm just gonna pour a little water in the intake side. We're gonna see if we got any any water coming through and do the exhaust side as well. So I let it set a little bit and it looks like we do have some water coming through, um, particularly on the intake side there, there's a little drop. Um, so I am gonna uh, put some more compound on and just grind down a little more. All right, I filled it with water again. It's been sitting for a while. Uh, looks like we have no leaking now. So it turns out we uh, did have a little bit of uh, leakage going on, so might see a, a power gain. Okay, so after lapping the valves, there's a possibility that the valve lash has changed. Uh, we didn't take off too much metal, but it may have changed. And the valve lash is the amount of space you have between the little... Um, piece on the rocker here and the lash cap there. Now we're just going to set, set this to 0 .003. So what we'll do is we'll get the engine at the top of the compression stroke and I've got the spark plug out here. I can see that the pistons all the way at the top. You do have to watch out to make sure that we're not uh, stuck on the decompressor on the cam. So we'll take our wrench and we'll loosen this nut here and it'll let us adjust. It'll let us adjust this little piece on top here. So I'm going to put the filler gauge in there and I'm going to tighten it down until we hit the filler gauge and we'll tighten this nut back down. So I'm gonna hold the little threaded piece just so it doesn't spin while we're tightening the nut back down. Filler gauge slides in. It's not too loose, but still sliding in pretty good. Now we'll do the other side. Now this other side is pretty tight. Um, there's actually no play in it at all. Okay, filler gauge still slides in there. We'll loose here again. Filler gauge slides in there. So it looks like we're good to go. And 
that's how you lap the valves on a Predator 2 and 2. As you saw, we had uh, a little bit of water leaking. Um, so the, you know, this is uh, essentially a brand new or uh, pretty new engine and it came from factory with the valves leaking. It might pick up a little bit of extra power.